Hi, I'm Mark Glassoff from Framework. Welcome to this first lesson in JavaScript. Okay, so you know some HTML, you know some CSS, and now you want to move on to a real programming language. In this video, we're going to get you started with JavaScript. We're going to do a few of the basics, and then you can continue learning on your own. Let's get started. I've loaded up Visual Studio Code, and I have my cursor flashing in a file called first.html. This is where we're going to write our HTML and our JavaScript. You may be surprised that I'm using an HTML file. We're actually going to embed our JavaScript inside an HTML wrapper. So in order for the browser to recognize the file, we've got to save it as .html. Plus, this allows Visual Studio Code to do syntax highlighting, which will certainly help as we write the code. So I'm going to start with my HTML basic document structure. And with Visual Studio Code, that's easy. Just type the HTML, and then, of course, the code will fill in here. So let's, instead of document, call this first JavaScript. And inside the body, I'm going to put a little more HTML. We need a logical division where we can output our actual result from the JavaScript. So here I have a logical division that I've ID'd as out. And below that, I'm going to put our script tags. Now notice the script tags are actually below the logical division. And the reason for that is we want the logical division to be in memory when the browser runs the JavaScript. This way, if the browser references the logical division, as it will, that logical division will already be present in memory. Let's see how. So here in the script, I'm going to type my first command, document. And we're going to use the command get element by ID. And we're going to get the element out. Now, you've seen that out before because it's the same as the ID we used on line 9 for our logical division. And I'm going to set the inner HTML property. And I'm going to set it to hello world. Inner HTML does just what you'd expect it to do. It puts HTML inside of our elements. So here, if we look at the code on line 11, document.getElementById out is getting the logical division on line 9. That's the element ID is out. We're setting the inner HTML property to hello world. All right, so let's save our document and let's take a look at the result in the browser. And there you can see, I'll magnify it for you, the text hello world. So with JavaScript, we were actually able to output the text hello world to the browser window. If I wanted to, I could embed some HTML in here. So it outputs the hello world as a heading one. If I save and we take a look at the result again, there you can see now we've got this rendered as a heading one. So already with one line of code, we've written our first JavaScript program. But obviously, we could do the same thing with HTML by itself, so this isn't a very useful program. Let's actually write a program that does something interesting. So I'm going to actually comment out line 11. We don't need it, and I'm going to leave it there for your reference. Let's go ahead and do a dog years calculator. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of dog years, the idea is a dog lives seven years for every human year. So if your dog is two in human years, in dog years, your dog is 14. We're going to make a little calculator that calculates that using JavaScript, and I'm going to explain the basic concepts. So the first thing we're going to do is create a variable to hold the age of the dog that we want to calculate. So I'm going to use the keyword var and we'll call the variable dog age. So there I've declared a variable called dog age, and I'm going to assign it the initial value. How old is your dog in human years? So notice I used the prompt command there. That's going to prompt the user with the text, how old is your dog in human years, and assign whatever value the user enters to the variable dog age. We can actually try it at this point and see what it looks like. I'm going to save and try it in the browser. And there you can see the dialog box, how old is your dog in human years? And we can enter a value, but that's it, because that's the end of our program. Our program doesn't do anything else but get that value. But behind the scenes, the value that I entered is assigned to the variable dog age. 
Now, by the way, the prompt command is not a great way to get data from the user. Even though I typed a number in that example, the user could type anything and you could get bad data to process in your program. For right now, as you're learning, this type of thing is fine. But keep in mind, later on as you get more advanced, you'll need to sanitize the inputs that the user provides. All right, so now let's do something with dog age. I mentioned that the dog age in dog years is the age times seven. So let's create another variable and let's call it dog years and let's assign that the value dog age and we'll multiply that by seven. We use the asterisk for multiplication. Now you'll notice as I'm creating these variables, I'm using the equal sign. The equal sign is also known as the assignment operator. And the right side of the assignment operator is always evaluated first. So in this case, we're going to take dog age, multiply it by seven, and assign it to dog years. After that calculation is done, we need to alert the user to the result. So I'm going to create a third variable called result. And this variable holds a string value, which is a series of characters. In dog years, comma, your dog is... And then we'll attach to that, or concatenate, which is the computer science word, the dog years variable. So that's going to take the result that it's calculated and attach it to this string. Now, so far, there's nothing for the user to see. We've declared three variables, but these are behind the scenes. So what we need to do is, again, put this inside the logical division out. So here we go. Documents get element by ID, and remember our ID is out, as you can see on line 9. Again, we're going to set the inner HTML property, and this time we're simply going to set it for results. Because remember, the result variable has our result string that has our result value, dog years, plus the text in dog years your dog is. And there we've got a very basic program. Let's go ahead and save, and let's test it in the browser. All right, so how old is your dog in human years? I'm going to enter five. So now we should see a result. In dog years, your dog is 35. So that works just fine. It's important to test more than once. So let's test again. How old is your dog in human years? Let's say our dog is 12. In dog years, your dog is 84. So there we've got our very first program in JavaScript, and we went over a couple of different concepts. We created numerical variables, we did multiplication, and we created a string variable. Let's do one more similar example here in this first lesson on JavaScript. I'm going to comment out again everything we've done so far. This way, when you download this code, you have all of that. So let's use the comment symbols here. And I'm going to start a new program right below that. I'm going to leave our logical division without, so we have a place for the output. So this time, we're going to calculate whether or not someone can legally vote. We're going to simplify it a little bit and say you can legally vote if you're 18 or older. So this time, we're going to prompt the user and ask them their age. So let's go ahead and in more modern JavaScript, instead of var, you would see let. So this time I'm going to see let. You'll still see var, so I wanted to use both of them. Age equal prompt, and we'll just ask the user, how old are you? So now the user will enter their age in the dialog box. It'll be assigned to the variable age. And remember here we're using let, which is a more modern version of var. There are some shades of difference, but they're not important right now as you're just getting started. And now what we want to do is we want to determine if the age is greater than or equal to 18. So we're simply going to use an if statement, age is greater than or equal to 18. That's called a logical condition. A logical condition results in a true or false value. So here it's going to take the age it's entered and see if it's greater than or equal to 18. If it is, the resulting value will be true. If not, false. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in this code block here in these curly brackets what we want the program to do if age is indeed greater than or equal to 18. So here we're going to use documents, get element by ID, and we're getting out. And this time we'll set the inner HTML for the text you are eligible 
to vote. So that's the message we want the user to see if they are eligible to vote. So now, if we test our program and I did everything correctly, how old are you? Let's say 19. You are eligible to vote. Let's test it with a different value. How old are you? 25. You are eligible to vote. Let's test it with one more value. Let's say 12. And we get no results. So that's bad engineering because there's no result at all. The user doesn't know whether the program broke or that's what it's supposed to do. We always want to give the user some kind of feedback. So let's code some feedback if the user is ineligible to vote. All right, so now we need an else statement. And the else statement and its code block inside of curly brackets will run if the statement is not true. Document, get element by ID. Again, we're getting out. And this time we'll set the inner HTML to you are not eligible to vote. So now our program should react in both cases. In case age is greater than or equal to 18 is evaluated as true, and in case age is greater than or equal to 18 is evaluated as false. Let's try it in the browser. How old are you? So let's say 19. You are eligible to vote. Let's run it again. How old are you? 12. You are not eligible to vote. All right, so now we've tested all the individual cases. So in this video, to get you started with JavaScript, we've written two separate programs, one that calculated dog age and a second that used a conditional statement to test whether or not a user is eligible to vote. Obviously, we're just scratching the surface here with this little bit of JavaScript. If you'd like to become a JavaScript pro, visit us at frameworktv.com. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Mark Lassoff for Framework.